What's up y'all, my name is Ray. If you're here for the first time, welcome. And to my returning viewers, I am humbled to welcome you back for another video. Today, my friends, we're learning a little bit more about Hinduism or Sanatana Dharma through watching a video titled The Story Behind Hindu Worship of Cows from the YouTube channel Captivating History. And I am really excited. This will be my third video learning a little bit about Hinduism on the channel. And so far it's been such an enlightening and enriching little journey. I just can't wait to learn more. And guys, if you enjoy hanging out today, please leave a like on this video and on the original video as well. The link will be in the description. Drop me a comment below. You'll make my day and subscribe to the channel. If you're not already, we're going for 25 K. Also, I have a Patreon and YouTube memberships. If you want to go above and beyond to support the channel and get access to full length movie and TV reactions and have your name in my videos, that kind of thing. And with all that said, I'm excited. I'm ready to go. So without further delay, let's watch the story behind Hindu worship of cows from Captivating History. It is illegal to kill cows in many Indian states. Jail time often awaits the cow criminal. Mm -hmm. It may seem strange to Western tastes, but there is an abundance of cows in India who live without any danger of being eaten. The laws prohibit the intentional slaughter of cows. Luckily, it does make an exception for accidents or self-defense. Still, even with a few exceptions and veterinary certificates to put down old cows, there is a serious overpopulation problem in some parts of India. This situation has come about due to the Hindu belief that all living things are sacred, including cows. I'm going to pause it real quick there. So uh, first thing I want to mention, I, I did not know that there was considered to be an overpopulation problem in some Indian states due to these laws. Um, that's very interesting. I, I guess I don't want to say I'm surprised, but, um, you know, just because uh, the proliferation of, of those animals, if they're not being um, culled in some way, uh, does make sense. But I had no idea. I had no idea. I'm curious how how that's being addressed in Indian culture. Um, guys, I know for a lot of you, you know, this information is going to be like common knowledge, but to a Western eye, this is, this is really fascinating stuff. I'm, um, I'm very interested to learn more. So let's, let's keep going. Due to the Hindu belief that all living things are sacred, including cows. However, their milk and other dairy products feature prominently in Indian cuisine, showing that the cows are more than just a herd of large wandering vagabonds. Their religious designation is woven deep into India's history, going back to the prehistoric people. They are still a uniting factor in Hinduism today. What are the historical reasons the cows are considered holy? The first people in India were the Harappans and the Sarasvati, who lived there from about 7000 to 3300 BCE. They mostly hmm. lived in family groups, but the river valley allowed them to form an agrarian society and possibly the world's oldest cities. The rivers wow. were reliable wow. and flooded twice a year, allowing the Harappans to have two growing seasons. They could grow enough food to feed their families and have a respectable stockpile. Some families even kept animals like sheep, goats, and cows, but most Harappans and Sarasvati were vegetarians. Domesticated animals were not common, and crops were plentiful. If they ate meat, they tended to eat chicken or jungle fowl. The revolution for the Indus Valley people was moving from a nomadic lifestyle to building cities, which Victorian archaeologists later discovered. These cities were carefully planned into rows and squares, and they even had a citywide drainage system that surpassed the sewage systems the Victorian archaeologists were using at home. The cities were also filled with artwork, Amazing. trade relics, Amazing. and religious documents. Historians are still working to decipher the ancient Harappan writings, which include drawings of elephants, rhinoceros, and lions. Their civilization appears to be more complex than just city planning. They also built ships and established trade routes to places like Mesopotamia and Egypt. They would trade precious items like gold, ivory, and cotton for bronze, tin, silver, and soapstone. The Harappans and the Sarasvati had strong links to the world outside of India. I'm going to pause it real quick right there um, just to talk about. So I know very little about the Indus Valley civilization, but what I do know, he's kind of he's kind of reiterated for me there. Um, that being how old and sophisticated for the time it was. I mean, sophisticated for the time almost feels like I'm underselling it. I mean, it was really some of these things we found in the Indus Valley civilization were hundreds or thousands of years ahead of, of what we would expect to see from um, civilizations of that time. So it's just fascinating. 
the fact that vegetarianism was such a big part of these early agrarian societies is something I had no idea. Um, I, I, I did not realize that vegetarian living um, had its roots that far back, which makes sense, of course. I guess I just never really gave it any thought. But if you live in a society where um, it's, it's that plentiful, where the crops are that plentiful, the growing seasons are that reliable... Um, you know, I suppose it makes a little bit of sense that, uh, that a vegetarian society could, could evolve. I just, um, I had no idea. I had no idea. That's fascinating. It's really fascinating. The Harappans and the Sarasvati had strong links to the world outside of India, but archaeologists are most intrigued that they do not appear to have had a lot of weaponry. It's typical for ancient civilizations to have many swords, spears, and arrowheads, but the Indus Valley civilization do not appear to have been involved in much war. It wasn't completely peaceful. Some copper spears and clay balls have been discovered, but this seems to have been a largely peaceful time in India's history. The first Indian civilization eventually faded away. Historians aren't quite sure why their civilization died, but they were most likely not forced out by war. There appear to have been natural disasters, like earthquakes and unusual flooding, which caused these first people to abandon their cities. In their place, the Aryan people moved in. The Aryans were a nomadic group called Vedic Aryans, or Indo-Europeans. After the Harappan civilization had faded, this new group crossed over the mountains with their herds of cattle, looking for grazing land. Mm. They bonded with the local people who remained, and their cultures mingled. The dominant language became Aryan, but the prevailing agricultural practices resembled the Sarasvati tradition, even though the Indo-Europeans built their own cities. Historians even believe that the Aryan people, not the indigenous ones, wrote the famous Vedic texts, even though some Vedic artifacts appear to predate the arrival of these Indo-Europeans. Wow. The Vedas are important in the Hindu religion. They give many of its fundamental teachings. It is possible that the Vedas show collaboration between the first people of India and the Aryans. When Amazing. the Vedic Aryans moved their cattle across the mountains into the Indian subcontinent, they believe cows were a sacred and respected part of life. They used their cows for milk, not meat. While these people were not vegetarians, the belief that cows are holy has persisted in many Hindu sects today. What are the religious reasons that Hindus consider cows to be holy? Although there are many deities in Hinduism, cows are not gods. Their holy status comes more from what they represent than what they actually are. All life is valuable in Hindu belief and the cow symbolizes other creatures and Mother Earth. The cow represents Mother life, Earth. goodness, and nourishment. Even though beef is usually not consumed by Hindus, cows still provide many essential things to life, like milk, ghee, and fertilizer. The cow is often revered for her generosity because of her milk production. Milk is used in Indian cuisine today and would have been important to the survival of the Vedic Aryans. The cow also symbolized a non-violent lifestyle that conforms to Ahimsa, a Hindu ideal of non-injury to all living creatures. Although Hindus ah. respect and honor the cow, not all sects worship it, even though the cow can play an important role in religious festivals and ceremonies. Cow-themed jewelry and clothing are sold at fairs across India, showing the Hindu adoration of these holy creatures in vivid color. One of the most important festivals involving cows is the annual Gopishtami festival. We'll get into that in just a second. I just want to say how how amazing it is that the roots of this, and this is what I expected to learn here, um, that the roots of of this, um, you know, not not just cow worship but cow reverence, go back as far as they do. I was expecting to see something like that, but the extent to which this goes back in history um, and the complexity between. Um, you know, the original peoples of India, the Aryan people, um, and, and, you know, the way that they blended their cultures and it resulted in this, this, uh, widespread reverence and even worship of cows is just, is just amazing. And I wanted to mention, of course, you know, after watching the family man, um, in season two, they spend a little time focused on, um, the current, you know, controversial and even hostile elements of, of, uh, this situation where, um, and, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm just going to use Muslims as an example, um, from the show, but I know this, this could be any group of people, but some Muslims in India take issue with the reverence for cows or even use it as a way to attack Hindus 
with um you know maybe surreptitiously feeding them beef or throwing beef on them or something um i shouldn't even mention muslims because it could be anybody but it was it was a muslim uh sect in the uh in the show um and it's just uh again again from a western point of view this is all just just really fascinating stuff let's let's continue i'll quit i'll quit rambling here one of the most important festivals involving cows is the annual Gopishtami Festival. It celebrates the cow and its significance in Hindu culture. On the appointed day, everyone visits the cows and bathes them before decorating them with clothes and jewelry. The cow ah. is particularly important on this day, so calves are treated with the same respect that their mothers are. Hindu believers then offer respect, or in some sects, worship, to the cow using water, rice, fragrance, flowers, and incense sticks. The cows also receive special food to help with good health. After the cows are fed, the people also have a feast to remember this special day and the blessings that the cow generously gives. The Kopishtami festival comes Beautiful. from a Hindu myth where Lord Krishna, one of the central Hindu gods, spent time as a cowherd. Back in those days, children about the ages of 6 to 10 were expected to tend the cows. So as Krishna reached that age, his father, Nanda Maharaj, gave the care of the herd to him and Balarama, Krishna's older brother. In remembrance of this day, Nanda Maharaj organized a special ceremony to send the boys off. Radha, Lord Krishna's divine consort, was not allowed to go because she was a girl, but she dressed up as a boy and went anyway. This is also the day that Hindus believe Lord Krishna defeated Lord Indra, who was trying to flood the region of Raja. Ah. Lord Indra is the Hindu god of storms. He is also a warrior deity. Early in Hinduism, Indra was one of the most important gods. He delivered the rains for harvest, helped protect the people, and even fought demons on their behalf. The most famous demon Indra defeated was Vritra, who hid all the water on a mountain. The people were suffering from the drought, but Indra killed the demon and released the water back to the people. As time passed, though, Indra was not held in his high regard. In fact, the worship of Indra faded, and he became more of a mythological figure. In one version of the story celebrated during the Gopastami festival, Krishna convinces some of the cowherds in Vraja to stop worshipping Indra. Enraged, Indra sends rains to flood the region to showcase his prowess and ego. The people would have suffered and could have drowned, but Krishna refused to leave them in danger. He lifted Mount Govardhan with his little finger and allowed all creatures to take shelter underneath it for seven days. Finally, Indra realized his mistake and he paid homage to Krishna. The festival celebrates the end of the rain and how Krishna saved the people from the storm god's wrath. Lord Krishna is not the only link to cows in Hindu mythology. Although cows in general are not divine, there is a sacred bovine goddess in Hindu legend named Kamadenu. She represents abundance and is used across the Hindu sects. There are multiple conflicting versions of Kamadenu's origin story. One version says that she emerged from the cosmic ocean as it churned. She was then ordered to give milk and ghee for ritual sacrifice by Brahma, the creator god. Another version says that she was born from Daksha's burp, another creator god. Some say she was born of the vomit from a very drunk Brahma, and yet another version <laughs> says that Krishna created the divine cow. One day, when he and his lover Radha were in the middle of dalliance, they decided they wanted some milk. Krishna created a cow and was amazed as more cows emerged from her pores. They became part of the herd that Krishna and his companions watched. After realizing that the cow he created was also divine, Krishna worshipped her and commanded that others do so as well. There are many versions of Kamadenu's myth. One thing the stories do generally agree on is that she is the mother of all cows. Out of respect for her, Hindus honor all cows, but she has not developed a worship cult following, although she is depicted in some Hindu temples. Devout Hindus sometimes have her idol in their house. Kamadenu grants wishes and brings wealth and happiness to the home. For this reason, Beautiful. Hindus will often seek her blessings, even though they do not offer worship. Instead, most of the adoration goes to the cows on earth today, which are fed outside Beautiful. of temples and regularly honored. Beautiful. How does the exalted status of cows affect India today? 
we'll pause it right there because I want to touch on the stories about Krishna there. Um, obviously, again, I'm coming into this pretty much blind. I've watched a couple of videos on Hinduism or Sanatana Dharma, and uh, I've learned a lot. But, that you know, I mean, of course, we're talking about such a, a rich and vast topic um, that most of the stuff in here is completely new to me. Um, and the story about Vishnu protecting the people from the rains, um, I mean, all, all, and, and the, uh, the festival, um, and how cows today are adorned for that festival. And it's just, I'm, I'm really enjoying this video is I guess what I want to say. I'm learning a lot. I'll watch it again after we're done here too, just to, just to make sure it all sinks in because, um, this is something I would watch and I would have watched in my own free time. I thought it'd be fun to watch it on the channel, but, um, this is this is very genuinely interesting to me and I'm I'm really enjoying it. I think Captivating History did a great job. Let me know in the comments what you think about the job uh Captivating History uh does with this topic. I know there's, you know, certainly going to be some disagreement. I mean, we're talking religion, so keep it civil, guys, really. This channel is clearly trying to disseminate some very uh important and um, interesting knowledge and uh, so let's let's keep it civil but let me know if there's anything you would have added or changed in the video I'm really curious to hear your thoughts all right let's uh, let's finish this up how does the exalted status of cows affect India today today around 80% of the Indian population is Hindu and there are laws that prohibit the slaughtering of cows this stance has raised concerns from the secularists and the people who are not Hindu it has been seen as discrimination to ban the slaughter or consumption of beef. India is still working through all the implications hmm. of this. In the meantime, they also have to work through the consequences of having so many holy creatures across the country. India has more cows than any other country in the world, and these are not limited to the countryside. In 2008, there were about 40,000 cows in Delhi, Woo! and they can cause serious traffic issues. Wow. Delhi is currently trying to rehome the cows. But catching an urban street cow is harder than you think, especially because you cannot harm the cow while moving it. They are only allowed to use a tranquilizer or a stun gun when a veterinarian is present, which is not often huh. the case. These urban cowboys have to rely on a rope and brute strength to safely remove the cows from the streets. When caught, though, the cows are moved to special reserves to live their lives in peace, representing generosity and life. Today, there are over 305 million cows in India, a little less than one-third of the global bovine population. Wow. The cow is intended to represent abundance and life, and for a variety of historical and religious reasons, the Hindu people continue to honor the cow as holy. They run shelters for abandoned cows, and have passed laws that prohibit the slaughter of beef. Although not all cows in India today are wish-fulfillers, Hindus believe them all to be connected to the gods. And that's enough to make anything holy. To learn more about India, check out our book, History of India, a captivating guide to ancient India, medieval Indian history, and modern India, including stories of the Maurya Empire, the British Raj, Mahatma Gandhi, and more. Cool. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this. That's awesome. That was awesome. I really enjoyed that. Um, I thought that was a great video. I wanted to be sure we gave him... Um, Excuse me. We gave him time to get in his uh, his links there at the end because he put in a lot of work on that video and I'm here just just reacting to it. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm aware of, um, you know, how much time and effort goes into making such a such a, a well done video like that. So I want to be sure, guys, if you enjoyed it, um, be sure you go give him give him some love uh on on their channel over there and, and check out that book that looked interesting i might check that out myself so um really really fascinating video really fascinating topic i didn't know most of that i mean the stories about lord krishna were fascinating the roots of the cow worship slash reverence going back as far as it does is overwhelmingly interesting like the fact that the indus valley civilization was so far ahead of its time was agrarian was vegetarian and you know largely peaceful is just this uniquely fascinating topic to me i mean here was this remarkably peaceful society that developed its own reverence for animals and life. Um, it's just a beautiful thing to witness and to see how that, that, um, 
you know, has continued to grow and evolve all the way into modern times where you have 30,000, whatever it was, 30,000, I think cows in Delhi, you know, in a, in a huge, massive metropolis like that. The fact that you have almost a third, the cows of the entire world in India is just, um, it's just, it's so interesting. I, you know, I could have watched another 20 minutes of that, you know, like I, I want to know more, um, especially about, you know, it, it is it's interesting i mean coming from a western point of view coming from an american point of view where of course i eat beef we eat a lot of beef here um you know seeing this the 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 differences in culture i'm a firm believer of like that when in rome mentality meaning like if i was ever to visit india i would of course not eat any beef and i would be very happy to um adhere to the to the cultural um you know the the cultural beliefs and the cultural practices while i'm there um and you know it's just it's it's really interesting to see these differences and consider how my life might be different if i had grown up somewhere else or grown up with a different set of um beliefs in my early youth um i will say and i know that <laughs> i know i know guys a lot of a lot of folks like a lot of folks are just negative and they'll they'll call me out in the comments and just say that i'm like pandering for views or whatever but uh and that's that's fine right i'm a youtuber we're all pandering for views on some level um but this stuff is genuinely interesting to me and i'm 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 legit fascinated and i'm really glad that you guys are joining me and uh helping me learn some i learned so much for the from the comments i think i learned more from the comments in the last few videos than from the videos themselves which is amazing because i learned so much from the videos but i mean i was getting all these long drawn out and i don't want to say drawn out because they weren't drawn out in like a bad way but these long in-depth information rich comments that were so you know they continued to enlighten me and continued to give me more reason to continue looking into this and and more fire to learn more i mean it's just i i can't thank y'all enough it's it's been a really awesome experience Thank you to my patrons. Thank you to my channel members. You guys are amazing and you're helping make this channel grow. Um, thank you to everyone who leaves a comment, leaves a like on the video. You know, all that stuff helps with the algorithm. And more importantly, it makes me very happy. So um, thank you guys. Thank you all for being here. I hope I see y'all again soon. Peace out.